All right. So now that you know the general idea of why we're doing this and kind of like the overview of how you're doing it and where you go to get the articles, now we're going to talk about the different parts to this. So what I tried to do is try to break it up into four manageable and easy to see different parts. Um, and so that's what the rest of this, uh, that's what the rest of your packet kind of addresses. And so right now I'm going to turn to page in your packet, I'm going to turn to page 27 because that's the first part that's going to happen with this assignment. The first part is the annotations, right? So that's a pretty easy and simple thing to do. Like you got to print out the article, period. Print it out. Um, you do have to have a hard copy. Now it doesn't matter if you, now it does say print it out and annotate it. If you're going to use Kami, obviously you're not going to print it out, but you still need to have a printout of your annotations. So even in Kami, you can save your PDF that you've annotated and then you print that PDF. So you need to have a, a actual print copy of this in class. And try to avoid copying and pasting from Microsoft Word. I know that there are some articles that when they print, they print really weird. Like you get 18 pages and they're all on the left hand side. If you've never experienced that, consider yourself lucky because it's super obnoxious. But try, uh, do not please do not put the all the article in copy or copy it and then paste it in Microsoft Word. Just get it from the news source. Okay. Um, you're going to do a close reading of the article and you're going to annotate it. All right. Um, you here are some things that you should be looking for and some of these are more obvious and um, or not. And this these these pieces here uh, throughout the next week in class, we're obviously going to be discussing these more. So any time that, or noting the speaker's tone, how does the speaker seem to be writing about this? And possible any tone shifts. And remember what I told you in class in general, you should always annotate any shift. Any shift. So shift of content, shift of tone, anything like that, any shift or transition. Okay, so you can practice you can practice your annotations on the current events. Um, strategies are like, what are things that you see, like word choice? What is the author trying to do? What is the new journalist trying to do to convince you of a certain idea? Um, looking at organization, how does it start? So very similar to uh, Brooks with, why does he start with Bernie? Why would they start with this idea? What are they trying to get? What are they finding? What are they trying to convey is the most important? And just in general, how is this arranged? You got a really good example of the importance of organization with Brooks. And so don't ignore that in news articles. And then Aristotelian appeals, which we will discuss a little bit later. So if you don't know what these are right now, do not poop your pants. We will discuss them by the end of, by the middle of next week, you will know what all of those are. So to break it down a little bit better for you, if you want a little more specific questions, because I know that always helps me, um, Use these. These are huge. These are great guiding questions. Um, how is the column open? What about closing? Again, harken back to Brooks. Why does he open with Bernie? Why does he close with that one sentence, uh, that statement about what we struggle with? Um, where does the thesis come up? And I know that seems antithetical to news sources because we automatically assume that oh, it's news. It's not biased. It's facts. Be careful because that is fundamentally not true. Uh, even statistics can be manipulated, so you need to be very careful. How, uh, how, or and even where, where does the thesis show up? So don't just do how. Where is a very good idea as well. Do they put it at the beginning? Do they put it at the end? Um, and sometimes it's sprinkled throughout. So if you're reading an article on the Ferguson riots in, uh, or the riot, the race riots in Ferguson, that the thesis might come towards the middle after they describe the scenes. Then they say, uh, and police were particularly brutal against these protesters. So that's kind of an a, a pretty clear like statement of opinion there within a news article. So do you see a thesis in here? If so, where? What is it? How do they announce it? Um, again, looking at organization, are there different parts or sections to the column? Like, do, do they actually label it or do they split it up with headings? Um, 
is there a lot are there a lot of observations because oftentimes observations are flawed i read a research paper last year from an ap student talking about how when we remember things they are absolute they're actually false we should never remind remember or excuse me rely on our memories because they make things up or they fill in the blanks for us. So are they relying on, are they providing information that's reliable? Are they doing it personal interviews? Is it experience, facts? And remember, don't forget about SMINK. Are the facts reliable? Okay, so you're assessing like the use of information that's provided in this text. Then what kind of word choice or diction that's being used? Uh, remember that uh, Brooks decided to include the descriptions that Bernie uses, like scraping the breastbone and screams that still ring in my ears, and the uh, the hand that or the, it was that her skin was pulling against or fighting against the surgeon that he had to switch hands. That's a pretty vivid. Uh, those words were pretty vivid and evoked a specific had a specific purpose. So what words are being used and you see conversations like this happening in news articles as well that they might um they might describe people as protesters while some news articles will 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 describe them as rioters those are much different words for what they are trying to present as the same thing protesters are protesting an idea oftentimes well i guess not oftentimes nonviolent but they can be nonviolent protesters seems to imply that they have a purpose rioters imply absolute violence that they are getting there to to just rob loot etc so how are they describing the people how are they describing the area if they describe it as a dilapidated house as opposed to a struggling home that's a huge difference so what words are they using to describe um any word sentence structures that you think are are um important to note are they short concise sentences that really hit you and punch you in the face or are they longer descriptions that tend you have to like weave through um are there any assumptions that you see happening within this you know how do you know their assumptions so um any unstated assumptions so these these are all things that you can look for and annotate for uh they are not i, I would say that's an exhaustive list some of them are going to be more important than others so sometimes you're going to be like oh the opening and closing doesn't really matter Oh, or sometimes you're gonna you're going to articulate like oh there's not a whole lot there's not actually not sections or the organization of the article doesn't matter and so these this is not a must do every time this is a these are things that you could and should be looking at so um, do not think that this is a requirement for every time this is simply for you to say all right, Ms. Haynes said I have to do an annotation. Here are some common things that I should look for. Uh, so these are suggestions about where to start, but you're the reader. You identify what seems more important than, the, than, than something else. So it's, an exo it's a big list. You don't have to look at these and talk about, every, you don't have to annotate every single one of them if it doesn't seem important. So it's gonna be hard to do that the first time around, but again, the more you practice these annotations, the easier it gets.